Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Mystical Today. I am bringing you Monk Monday number 129. For those of you who don't know what this is, you send any gameplay you have to this email right here, and I critique it, I review it, I go through it. Twos, threes, shuffles, RBGs, Mythic Plus, Raiding, Mistweaver, Windwalker, doesn't matter what MMR, 1400 MMR, 2400 MMR, a plus two keystone, a plus 20 keystone. It really doesn't matter. One of the best ways to improve at this game or pretty much anything is to w record your gameplay and watch it back, critique yourself. So please send in your gameplay. And if you're too shy, just record your gameplay, watch it back, and you don't have to send it in. Just watch your own gameplay. It's amazing. Today we have Veneris, and he has eight games that are mostly fist weaving, a couple of crafted gear. Okay, I will take a look at it. This will also probably be season two i'm sorry i think these games were sent in two weeks ago so that was like end of season and i just didn't do much during the off season so i do apologize it took so long it doesn't only take this long i just take in whatever is sent to me and then every monday i do this so let's just start with each video and by the way you can send me as much gameplay as you want i literally don't care so let's start off with game one it looks like and you don't need to edit them either don't you don't need to edit any games at all uh it looks like we're playing Miss or Fist Weaver Frost Mage with against a Holy Pally Affliction Warlock. Okay, so this is really this is one of the matchups where you're gonna want to fist weave. Which so this is a good good job that you're fist weaving. Affliction Warlock's damage is spread damage and it's freaking insane. So you're always gonna want to fist weave versus them. It's much easier to deal with their damage than with a caster uh, caster Mist Weaver. So let's see how this goes. Um, we do have our ancient teachings, which again is. That's good. That's good. We got a kick on the Holy Pally 2 wall from the Warlock. I'm trying to see if we have Rop or anything because this is going to get some Affliction Warlocks out or Unstable Afflictions out. And we have, if you have Dampen Harm, you can reverse the UA back to the Warlock. It just does more damage. You also have Rop. So whenever I see a Warlock wall and the Warlock isn't on Stun DR, especially right now because you could stun the wall and then you could stun the deliverance from the holy pally you'll probably get some really good value you'll probably get a trinket out of it too probably from the holy pally uh so we'll see no. beautiful you know i don't i don't watch these games beforehand i'm just letting you know i'm just telling you what i would do uh really good leg sweep here this is really you're hopefully going to get something i'm surprised you didn't get a trinket from that um you are playing with the frost mage so you don't really have to in cap you have polys from your mage. Obviously, if you're playing against a caster or something or a melee and your mage is struggling to get polymorphs, you can always go for an in-cap. But uh, so far, I see that the the pally is on poly DR, so it looks like you're able to get them. In-cap is DR, so be careful with that. Blinding light on you. This is actually a really, really bad blinding light from the holy pally because it dispels dots uh, that the affliction warlock has. So that really sucks for him. He has to get UAs back. Great kick there on that unstable affliction. And just doing damage. Soul Rot. So Soul Rot is what, what you want to save Revival for. You don't really have to do it so much in twos just because there is less, you know, chaos going on. But in threes and Solo Shuffle, Soul Rot is kind of their big cooldown. This is what lets them use their Drain Life on multiple people. So whenever you see Soul Rot, that's normally when you want to Revival. Their two set also makes it so Soul Rot does more damage and lasts longer. So definitely, if you have Revival, this is when you press it. And I'd say we're doing a really good job right now. We still have Chiji as well. So we're doing a pretty, pretty good. And we have Life Cocoon. So we're doing really good. This poor me, this poor Warlock is just <laughs> getting <laughs> just kicked. And great job here. That's the Holy Pally uh, Save by the Light. I, I think that's what it used to be called. I forget what it's called now. Um, that's Aura Mastery on one of the heals from the Pally as well. Drain Life Observer. So hopefully, I don't know if you can actually kill the Observer, but you probably want to. Just because it does a ton of damage, or is that that's not the observer? Never mind, I'm crazy. Uh, nice kick again on the warlock soul rot as well. Nice kick on it. Nice kick. Here comes soul rot, and we're just doing a ton of damage right now. Your mage is just absolutely pumping. So we're doing. I mean, you're just doing damage. You know, there's really nothing else to it. Um, versus affliction warlocks, kicking drain life and soul rot and unstable affliction are like the three main things you want to kick. If you ever do get a UA on you, you can always reverse back with diffuse magic. And this pally is just staying stacked for these double leg sweeps. So I'm I'm actually surprised that you don't get a trigger from these guys yet. Nice kick on that fear. And we're just kind of just cranking this team. Todd work. Oh my god. There's really nothing that would change about that game. That game. I I genuinely do feel bad for that warlock. I really do. Wait, did can I just hit next and it just goes to the next game? Oh my god, this is amazing. Yeah, that nothing I would change about that game. Um 
you did a great job kicking what needs to get kicked. You made sure a great job of kicking whatever needs to be kicked. There's really nothing else. That pally kept stacking up on you, though, so I don't know what that's about. All right, so what do we got? We got Arms Warrior, Resto Druid. I really hate fisting into... This This is this is an example of, like, I would definitely cast versus this because you could play, like, the double knock from Thunder's Focus T. Your mage can keep the warrior slowed, and I think the warrior... I think warriors absolutely crush fist weavers. In my experience, I mean, you know, I could... Could could do better probably, but I, I would still say that warriors crush fist weavers, um, and I don't think the warrior will have an easy time hitting the mage as well. So blade storm there, so he's gonna not, not gonna be able to get slowed or disarmed. They're probably gonna go you because I know this this warrior is not gonna be able to hit the mage. That's where a frost from your mage as well. Anything on the druid here? So the druid, this is a resto druid, so they, it's really hard to get polys on them. So you probably you probably need to one that get needs to get the in cap sweep. So in cap the druid, sweep the warrior because wo the mage doesn't have a stun either. So you're the only stun on this team. Um, so hopefully we get a stun on the warrior because I think he already blade stormed right. That was one of his. Oh, okay, all right, another blade storm, fantastic cyclone coming out on the mage. He probably just triggers. I was surprised I'm not triggering that. Um, but yeah, that's iron bark. Nice CS on that cyclone. Uh, we're feared now. We're probably going to have to press something. We have Life Cocoon. We have Revival. Um, and if we have Disarm, I'd probably press it. That's Fort Brew, which is really good. We have Chiji as well. That's really good. Life Cocoon's fine. This is fine. This is this is okay. Nice Polymorph on the Druid as well. Um, you want to sweep. Yeah, we're looking for a sweep right now on the Warrior. Just because... Yep. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. This guy's just dead. Why are they not drinking? Nice. I... Don't know why neither of them drank it in. Okay. That is fantastic. That was really good. Really, really good job. Um, one thing I would recommend, put a port down and use it. I don't know if we put a port down. Okay, we did. Put a port down and play away from it is what I would recommend. Because this will it, this will make the warrior, especially versus melee, this will make the warrior's life absolutely hell. I mean... If it, the warrior can't hit the frost mage already, and then if you're porting during his cooldowns, he might just rage quit. So I, that's the only thing I would recommend, just because you were taking a lot. Like, I know right, where is it? We use Fort Brew, which is great, and then we use Dampen Harm, and then we also use Life Cocoon. You know, what I would have recommended, if you could have, is you could have you could have ported, and if you're using Shaylin's Gift, port Shaylin's Gift, port back and do damage. And that's, that's kind of how you deal with people that are targeting you. That's at least what I do, because... People are probably going to kick Shaylin's Gift if you just uh, kick it out in the open. So that's what I would do. But besides that, this game is perfect. I, I still don't know why they, they did not trigger the... That, that's not... I don't know why. Um, another Warrior. So this is... Let me, let, me let me peek those stats real quick. Let me see what we got here. Um, haste. Oh. Yeah, you want... Way, 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 way less mastery. Like... You don't want any mastery, actually. If you could have 0% mastery, you probably could. Or you probably should. So you, you want haste verse when you fist weave. Oh, wait. Dial it back in. We are casting. All right. <laughs> okay. We are casting now. I would, again, um, beautiful. Only thing I would recommend is I know that it's 10.2 now, and you sent this to me in 10.1.7. I think that's how that works. I would just drop Misty Peaks, by the way. I don't know if you've updated your build or not. Probably have. I'm just letting you know that you probably should just drop um, Misty Peaks. It's the proc rate is really bad. And then I would probably just go like here. Actually, a normal threes or a normal twos, I go Respondent Mist into T of Serenity. So that's what I would do. And then there's one extra point that is somewhere. But I would also put one into uh, the green one here. I forget the name of it. I forget where. I don't know where that point is. But anyway, we shall continue. Uh, we want disarm. By the way, D uh, let me see real quick. We want disarm Zen Focus T. Yeah, you could you you know what you could do. You could really drop Zen Focus T because they only have one range kick, and if you're able to kite, you could probably just you know not get kicked and just line the shaman, wrap yourself if the warrior's on you, and then just free cast. Um, and then I would actually say Restoro or Peace Weaver is okay. I guess Peace Weaver is okay, but your mage can dispel hexes on you. So I would say that you could probably drop Zen Focus T for either Eminence or Thunder's Focus T. You know, try to knock the warrior back a little bit. I swear you would make every warrior rage quit playing this comp. I don't know why this isn't. This should be fine. Okay. Uh, you get sheared already, which, it, it, again, getting kicked getting kicked isn't a bad thing. Okay. You got 
now the shaman doesn't have kick when the warrior connects. You know what I mean? Like, perfect. Good. That's that's not bad at all. Uh, we're rooted, and the warrior just used kicked on the mage. So they have no kicks right now. There's a hex on you. Careful. So there's a few things you could do. If Now, the mage definitely did kick the shaman, but let's just say your mage didn't kick the shaman. You could have hippity hopped over to this warrior that's blade storming, and it probably would have broke. So keep that in mind. You know, um, also, I don't think we have a port down yet. I know we don't. So let's try to put a port down and take advantage of it because uh, you might want to in-cap the shaman. Yeah, good, good. I really like that. The shaman's playing the pillar. Maybe sweep off. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, and we're just doing a good job here. Mage is doing a good job kiting. This is Icy Veins. Bladestorm from the warrior. This is also Avatar. So after this Bladestorm, we're going to want to disarm. I think we disarmed. I don't see disarm on your bar. So I'm going to try. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I see disarm right here. So we definitely want to disarm right here because this is just warrior damage. Good healing. Nice nice polymorph from the mage on the shaman. I can't tell. I would I would play also, I would play further away from the shaman, like much, much further away because shaman are like, shaman and druids are like the only healers that are just super annoying to play next to because the shaman is sheer, hex, slows, roots, like all that stuff, purges. So I would recommend just staying away from the shaman. I would almost line the shaman more than the warrior. Kick on the glacial spike. I'm sure the shaman's probably going to shoot in there. And they have knock. So, <laughs> yeah. He's going to try to root hex you here, potentially. No, he's just trying to root you down there. Static field totem is super freaking annoying. Uh, you could kill that, but it doesn't seem like he's pulling you. So, that's kind of good. Uh, glacial spike. I think the warrior's kick back. Yeah. Got to try to fake, I think, on our, on our mage. Just because they're just kicking every all of our damage. Another glacial spike coming in hot. Potentially. Nope. No grounding, actually. Shockwave on it. Polymorph on the shaman. No. Fear on the mage. They just don't want this glacier to go out. They, they really don't want this glacier to go out. Um, make sure you use your stacks of manatee as well. We're at 63% mana, 13 stacks of manatee. So normally what I try to do, and I'm, I'm not saying my way is perfect. I'm just telling you what I do. I try to consume like four to five stacks at a time when I know that I need, like right now, actually what you want to do is you want to do it before this even happens because your mage is going to keep dying when you're channeling your manatee. But what you want to do is you want to, you see this damage going out, you want to get like three or four stacks of mana T and then do like a Thunder Focus T, Soothing Mist, Vivify, Enveloping Mist or something like that. Just to reduce the mana cost. That way you just always have good mana because that Enveloping Mist right, that, that you use could have been used like 50% mana. Uh, this is this is also, you could just Life Cocoon right here. I, I would, rec in twos and shuffle when this happens because dampening is much higher and like ramps up, I would just Life Cocoon like, right now that's i mean this is just a life cocoon i think and then when the warrior uses burst cooldowns because your mage is frost right so they have two ice blocks that's really good um potentially even three if the game goes on long enough so you, you know and you're already at 40 percent mana so yeah life cocoon probably could have used that and saved like 20 percent mana and then we also have 16 stacks of manatee right now so you definitely want to press those Kind of soon. Or at least we can. Great in-cap here. Great, great, great. It seems like our mage... I'm not saying it like because your mage is bad at all, but your mage is struggling to get polys on the shaman just because the shaman is able to use the pillar and the warrior is just absolutely t just kicking everything your mage is casting. So, uh, oh, we're playing the frost stun or the frost mage stun, which is really cool. Grounding totem, though. Grounding totem does suck for your mage. Alter time is good. Ray of frost. Maybe we get kicked on it. Oh, we get sheared on it. Zen Focus T is fine, but we didn't have to because the Shaman just used Kick. Glacier Spike? Oh my god, we finally get it off. <laughs> oh my god, I swear your, your poor mage has been trying to get that off for like three minutes now. Um, yeah, we're doing a good job. We're at 20, uh, Now we're at 20 stacks of Manatee. So you now you're not getting stack, any more stacks of Manatee at all. And now we're just, we're just losing out on stacks. Hex on you. Sh I feel like your mage should be able to dispel it. Yeah. Lasso on your mage. Nice kick on that. Really, really good kick on that. We also want to disarm the warrior. Okay, we disarmed already. Okay. Sweep on the warrior. Yeah, you're the... um, You are the setup in this because you're the only stun that your team has. And now we're just drinking the manatee. Okay. Okay. Oh, my. Fort Brew. Revival. Life Cocoon. Okay, that's... Calm down. First of all, we, we just sat in the middle of the map and let this warrior just tunnel us. We could just port. What, what you could do 
is if you know your mage is blocked right now, obviously teams are going to swap to you. Whether it's twos, threes, shuffle, doesn't matter. If you're next to a team and your mage is ice blocked, they're probably going to swap to you. So that's when I would immediately just port and get away from big unit. <laughs> they just port away. That way they can't really hit anybody. They can't get any pressure on anyone because now they force our revival and life cocoon and fort brew and our mage has the debuff for ice block for 15 seconds. So let's be careful. Shaman, shaman are really hard for mages to deal with. So I don't, you know, it's it's a tough matchup. Good in cap on that hex. Maybe wrap off. Beautiful. Good wrap. And snow drift, right? This is a snow drift stun. I think you should get it right. Unless shaman has like a freedom or something. But I don't think they do. Sentence proc there. Lasso on you. Mage is struggling to stay alive. Nice hex on you though. Be careful. Might have to be second block. Second block is a little unfortunate. Yeah, that's that is very unfortunate. So yeah, right now I would just pour it and get away from this warrior. Good, good, good roll away. DR stun on you is perfect because they don't really, you know, now they don't really have a stun for the mage unless he has shockwave. Um, but nice in cap here as well. Let me see. Might want to put renewing mist. I feel like we're losing on a lot of healing with renewing mist. Like I just don't see. Okay, there we go. Okay, they might have just fallen off. All right, you want to make sure you apply renewing mist, especially at ten point two, because our two set is literally renewing mist nice kick on the lasso oh wow the warrior disarmed your mage that's crazy might want to kick or it might probably have to trinket the sphere trinket this hex yeah good trinket cocoon is perfect good lasso on or cheer on you is okay because whenever life cocoon is up by the way <sighs> excuse me whenever life cocoon is up always try to get kicked that's what i do if there's only one person dying and you life cocoon them, it's okay to get kicked while it's up. I also channel manatee stacks. So I have a lot of them uh, during life cocoon because I know they're not going to die or fall behind. But you do want to get a hot out on your mage because you... Yeah, you want to get a hot out on your mage because you want the bonus healing from the life cocoon to do something. Um, we have we have Rop, so we could... Oh, nice, okay. A sentence from the Shaman. Nice in cap. Ray of Frost on the Drew on the Warrior. Trigger from the Warrior. Trigger parry. Okay. We're starting to get buttons. Starting to get a lot of buttons here. Make sure you keep your doing mist on your mage. Good job. Static field totem. Good job. Lining here. He's trying to go for a hex. He might try to yank you out and try to hex you. That's grounding as well, which really sucks for your mage. Good kill there. You could defuse magic this route if you wanted to. Lasso on you is kind of annoying. Oh, no, I don't think this is gonna end well. Yeah. And they just got so much pressure. You're the it, this is just hard because your shaman, the shaman is just cheering the mage, grounding any mage damage. The warrior is able to just have a lot of uptime. So <clears throat> this is just a tough matchup for you. I would say you did a good job in capping. Try to leg sweep the warrior like pretty much off cooldown. That's what I would do. Just because you're the only stun in the matchup. And if you want, you could play Song of Chiji as well for the extra CC. That way, you know. Maybe you get a Trinket. The Shaman, I don't think Trinket all game, and the mana is actually insane. Um, and then with Manatee, we got to like 20 stacks. Just use them in like four to five stack increments. It's what I would do. And then heal heal for that, those five seconds. That's when you like crank your Vivify and Velvet Mists and your Renewing Mist. That way, they, because they have the 50% mana reduction, and it, you just get a lot of value out of it. Because it, it's more, it's not just about getting mana back from Manatee. It's that 50% mana reduction on your spell. So, like, you're preventing 50% mana being used in, like, a time where you, you're just spamming Envelope Mist. So, keep that in mind. Overall, though, I think you did a fine job with the rotating cooldowns. You, you used Life Cocoon when you had to. You, you know, had Renewing Mist up most of the game. Just make sure you keep those applied. Um, did good Disarms as well. You know, I think maybe we had Disarm at the end here. Maybe we could have lived, potentially. I don't know if we came out of the lasso. I don't think we did. No, he leapt. Maybe could have disarmed here. No, he blade storms. Yeah, I, I pretty good disarms as well. So you did the best that you could, but yeah, eventually the mage <clears throat> just gets stolen down. So no, that definitely sucks. All right. Oh, Lord. See, this this is why there's no casters in twos. Okay, it's so painful. It's so it's warriors and hunters and rogues. That's all it is. So let's see. Um, BM hunter Ardrid. So this one's tough. This one's tough for you guys. I'm, I'm rooting for you, but this one's hard. I would say your best chance, realistically, is to kill the rest of Druid in a leg sweep. 
That's I, I really like to think that's your best chance. The hunter might just stay behind the like literally might just pillar the mage and let the pets do all the work. But what your mage can do is exactly that right there. If your mage can frost over the pets and just kite the hunter you, and keep the pets slowed, you have a really good chance at winning this game. But your mage needs to make sure that's also alt, alt of time for the mage and some and kick from the hunter. This is really good. They're also gonna they're also gonna overlap the scorpion sting silence with the cyclone. So we don't mind that. It's not terrible. So now you know that's okay. But I would just keep in mind your mage really needs to just keep everything slowed. I know I know it might sound easy or crazy, but you really needs to keep everything slowed here. Be sure wrath from the hunter. So here comes their damage. Just gonna get chunked. Nice CS on the reclone. Beautiful hunter has no kick. So just free cast here. Good. Great. That's a trap. Oof. This guy, this animation right here. I think you try to avoid it. It was a slightly too late, but this animation was a trap. Oh my. I don't actually don't know how you didn't dodge that. Straight up. I don't know how. You could also eat this binding shot uh, for stun DR because I think you're on stun DR with Rake. Um, left your is fine. Left your is fine. You didn't have to trink it. That's the only thing that matters. In, in in no matter what, as long as you don't overlap, you're okay. And as long as you don't trink it, that's even better. Your mage is going to struggle. Oh, as just as I say that, that's trinket. Oh my god, we got treated. Sweep off, beautiful. Okay, Druid has no trinket, so we're doing a really good job here. Beast of Wrath again from the hunter. It's literally a permanent uptime for hunters. It's insane. Cyclone, you need to be careful. I like I said last game. Druids and shamans are the most annoying healers to play next to you because the shaman have all these tools. Druids are even more annoying because druids have damage. Like they have the rakes, they can go cat form and, and just do damage to you. They have triple cyclone, so they get cyclone you, cyclone you, cyclone you. And then they have mighty bash and they have root. So keep that in mind. And there's Ursula's vortex. So try to stay far from the druid because they're super annoying. They just interrupt your casting and it's, it's just not fun in general. Yeah, there's a cyclone on you. I, I guess as long as we have Trinket, we should be okay. But it's still, uh, you might want to get the silence right here. So this Scorpion thing right here, this is a slow. And then when the slow goes away, it could turn into a silence. So you want to dispel, boom, this silence right here. Because now your mage can't do anything. That's also a kick from the hunter. So the, it seems like the hunter is kicking your mage. That's tra uh, root. Nice, good tiger sauce, really good tiger sauce. It seems like the hunter is kicking your mage a lot and not you. So we don't mind this. We, you know, we don't this is a half clone. I'm pretty this has to be half, right? Yeah, it's a half clone. So we don't we don't we don't mind this either. They're just messing up their DRs. It's perfect. Just keep just remember that uh this is still a hard matchup. Are we playing eminence here too? Because we could avoid trap with eminence. Maybe if we taunt a pet here. Oh, wait. What? Okay, he trapped the mage. Kick on you. Nice poly on the druid here. Uh we need a sweep. No, no, we need a sweep on the hunter. Yeah, no, this this right here is a perfect example of it. We have CC on the healer. You need to sweep this hunter because, again, you are the only person on your team with a stun. And Snow Drift is not reliable. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's it's painful. And kept you into a sweep. Oh, oh, did we just trinket that? Okay. Yeah, I think we gapped the in cap. And then, yeah, you're better off just sweeping the hunter because your mage can get the follow-up poly, you know, like with the hunter CC'd, you'll, your mage shouldn't get kicked by anything. Uh, we do have 15 sacks of manatee here as well. So be careful. You know, we don't want to overcap 16 sacks now too. And we're at 27% mana. So this, this is not looking too good. Silence on your mage, trap on you. Might have to be a life, nice revival. Good, good, good. Nice manatee. Nice, nice, nice. We have to cocoon though. Okay, that's fine. I, at least, you, okay, all right. A little unfortunate. Why didn't you get a buff from, is that a bug? Why didn't you get the manatee buff? This is, that's, that's a bug. For sure, that's a bug, right? I don't see a manatee buff. Weird. Huh. That's interesting. I'm going to test that on live. That's, I've, hmm. Druid's looking for a drink. I mean, I, I guess if he wants to. Yeah. He has, he has trinket back in three seconds. So, what you're trying to set up, by the way, as mage. So, I don't play mage, monk, often in twos. Actually, I don't think I ever have. But what I would recommend, but I do play with the warlock. But what I would recommend is you want to get a polymorph on the healer and sweep the hunter. Or any DPS, essentially. Nice sweep here on the druid. 
Yeah, it, that's why I would recommend maybe playing Song of Chiji just for the extra CC. Seems like uh, you might have to versus these comps that just, I feel like they counter mage hunters and warriors. They're just so freaking annoying to play as a caster. Druid's chasing you down. Uh, we've already used one ice block. That's our second ice block. Cyclone on you. Okay. I mean, this is fine. Your mage is ice blocked. That is tar trap on you. I think you're fine. Yeah, this hunter hasn't landed a trap in a while. It's really annoying that hunters have enough damage to kill you, even if they don't have to trap. Cyclone on you. It's fine. It's half. It's okay. The, the, the half CC is okay. It's the, okay, cocoon on you. Didn't have to cocoon because your mage had alter time. Uh, right. I don't know who. Oh, I think you guys both did at the same time. But he's also at like, what, 80% health, 70% health. So it should be okay. Um, probably would just let the mage alter time. But we are out of ice blocks. So that overlap is kind of not good. It's not good. This is also a tough matchup for the mage in general. So, you know, don't. Don't feel bad about losing this matchup or, you know, if you're falling behind or whatever. It's just hard. It's just a hard matchup. Root on you. Druids are the kings of twos. We just need to embrace it. It's just an our druid world. We're just living in it. So, stun on you as well. Clone on you. Yep. Fantastic. But we're doing a good job of surviving. That hunter, the hunter just missed that trap while you were standing still. I'm, I'm letting you know that. I think that's a, that was a freezing trap right here. Right here, this trap right here, you're standing still casting, and the hunter missed. I'm pretty sure that was a freezing trap because he just used tar trap on you behind the pillar. So, <laughs> I, okay, Lord, Lord, oh my god. <laughs> well, we'll find out. You're probably gonna run into it. Let's see. No, damn, silence on you is okay. We don't mind this actually. Master's call, so we can't be slowed. Um, yeah, this is okay. We do have sweep, though. We do have sweep. Yeah, good, good. Yes, this is what we want. This is definitely what we want to see. Definitely more sweeps uh, off cooldown. Definitely want to keep, keep renewing mist on yourself. Fort Brew, I see we're spamming it. Fort Brew, diffuse magic, damage, harm. There's no way we die. This is like, what, 10 minutes of cooldowns right here, and we're dying through it. <laughs> um, we're doing a good job. Fantastic job. Make sure you keep renewing mist on yourself. We're doing good. I embark on the hunter. You definitely want to try to get around the pillar. Try to rob the corner of the pillar. That way it stays in line of your mage. But then, like, you can kind of free cast trap on your mage as well. Okay. Life cocoon on you is fine. But just be careful. Now, nice rob. No, really, really good rob here. Root on you. Yeah, this is this is good. Um, but we're going to run out of mana, sadly. The hunter is just... Is just He's got the whole zoo on you. Nice polymorph. Good. Nice repoly. Good. Yeah, roll across the map. Perfect. Nice Tiger's Lust there. Was that Tiger's Lust or just Cheat Torpedo? I think it was just Cheat Torpedo. Good. Good. But this might... Nice sweep. Yes, so good. Druid Trinkets. Go across the map. Do we port? Do we port? I have no idea if we port or not. Nice revival as well. We have a healing elixir. Zen Focus T here. Good. I don't know where our port is. I don't know if we're in range or not. I'm trying to see. Let me see. Where are you? This port. No, we're not in range of port, but we do have it. It's probably on the other side of the pillar. Damn, the hunter gets you. Hunting you down. Yeah, this is this is honestly, this is a really, really I would say our druid hunter, even right now in season three, is like the best comp in the game. So in twos. So don't even it's fine. Especially versus a caster and a misweaver. Like we you we no one really stands a chance versus them. Um, but I think you did a great job of surviving. Be careful. Always stay in range of your port, too, just because it's really, really important. You avoid damage, avoid CC, really, really good. Try to stay as far away from the Druid as possible just because they're super annoying. I would probably recommend playing Song of chi if you keep playing, like, Mage Monk just because it's not on GR with Polymorph and you can get follow it up. And then the most important thing is you. I think you want to leg sweep the DPS or whoever you're killing. Let your Mage fake the kicks. You know, do all the stuff, let them get kicked. And then once your mage gets a polymorph on the healer, leg sweep the DPS as soon as fast as you can. That's what I would do. Just because again, you're the only stun and you need the stun to to get a kill. I think there was a really good example, like where is it? Here? No, maybe it was further into the game. I think the druid was polyed, and you we could have swept the hunter. I'm looking for poly DR, but I'm not seeing. Hmm. It was some point during maybe here. Yeah, right here, right here. So the 
Yeah. So we were stunned. The mage got a really good poly on the hunter cause, or on the druid. And then the mage also jute kick. So there were no kicks for the mage at all. So your mage could have gotten repolys. And then you could the hunter was actually moving towards you and then could have swept the hunter. Hunter also had no trinket. Neither of them had trinket and sweep here. And then I feel like there was a good chance here. And then we had glacial spike available. This actually could have been a kill, potentially. I don't know how much damage like the frost mage is doing, but yeah, there was a good chance you could have gotten some cooldowns here just because of a sweep. So I would say sweep the DPS, let your mage get the polymorphs on the healer, and then ho hopefully you get more kills. Maybe a song of Chija as well. You never know. Um, all right, we're fisting. I see that we're fisting. Ooh. All right, we're not playing so uh, Shaylin's Gift. I was playing this last patch, and I liked this, this build a lot last patch. So I would I'd definitely recommend. Not versus a Demon Hunter. Oh, my. Yeah, Demon Hunters are... Even, like, I, I wouldn't fist versus a Demon Hunter even last patch just because they have Blur, and Blur makes it so that you pretty much, they just dodge your attacks. So it's really annoying. You can't hit them when it's up, and it's on, like, a 30-second cooldown or something. So unless you're hitting the Druid, I would probably would have casted this as well. But let's let's see, baby. Let's see how we do. Kick on your Mage. Alter time for your Mage as well. Nice Fade Line Stomp here. We want to sweep maybe when we can. Uh, Probably ink out that clone. Nice kick. So right now... Kick on the Druid, I would instantly, I would sweep this Demon Hunter and start doing damage to him. I bet you'd get a Trinket from him. Let me see if we sweep. No, that's big mana. Good. Okay. Nice Roots. Perfect. Great job from your Mage. Polymorph on the Druid. Yeah, this is... Reverse from Demon Hunter? No, this is when you want to sweep, by the way. All right, we sweep the Druid. Nice in cap DR. Frostbolt. Good. We're kind of owning this team right now. A wrap out of the Darkness. Even better. Fantastic blurs down. And we're kind of just we're kind of I would life cocoon the mage probably just because you want to you want to keep your mage aggressive and you want to you want to hold those ice blocks as long as you can. Bash on, on the mage, nice job. Kick on your mage as well. That's okay. Because we're just fisting. Kicks don't really matter. Um glacial spike. Nice. He's rooted now. We want to get something on the druid soon. Fear on you. I think this is okay. Could probably just life cocoon off if we need to. But it doesn't seem like we need to do clown on you is half. Probably want nice revival. Okay, this is fine. Clone on you is gonna be super DR. Oh, it's on the mage. We don't mind that clone. Yeah, clone on your mage is fine. Then you know, clone again on your mage. Yeah, you know, I mistimes it, so he clones it to the clone. Nice. We're just doing damage to the demon hunter. Clone again. Jesus, yeah. Demon hunters or uh druids are so great. Yeah, druid uh shifted that polymorph. So I would just go for an in cap. Oh, this is iron bark, so this is fine. So it's fine. Polymorph on the Druid. Iron Bark's on the Demon Hunter, so you're probably not going to get a kill. So it's fine to just build up damage right now. So I would just Tiger Palm and just start building up your damage. So as soon as Iron Bark's down, which is right now, you just do so much damage here. Cyclone on you. Oh, my. Ice Block. Oh, I didn't know Snowdrift kept going. Or even during Ice Block. Yeah, this is... This is, this is hard. Stunned. This is why I stay away from Druids, by the way. They're just so freaking annoying. Cyclone on the mage. Yep. Yeah. The Druid is definitely just Cyclone happy. We need to... I, I would honestly hit the Druid. I, I would... I, we haven't swept yet. Nice nice CS there. Nice in cap as well. Life Cocoon on the mage is perfect. Yeah. We sweep there on the Druid and we get a Trinket instantly. I would actually probably try to kill this Druid. There's Treants right there. Nice slow on the Demon Hunter. Nice. Yeah, oh, here comes the hunt. We have no life cocoon. Revival is good. Clone, though, is going to probably... Nice nice CS from the mage there. So we need something on the druid, like an in-cap or in-cap on that clone or something. Oh, I thought that clone was going to be on you. I guess we could just keep doing damage. We need a, uh, probably an in-cap on the druid, and then we can sweep the demon hunter in 15. I think we can kill something in 15 seconds because we have sweep, and neither of them have trinket. We trinket there. Okay. It's fine. He has Blur coming back, so be careful. I think that was reversed from the Demon Hunter, which I think is fine. Nice kick. Okay. We have Sweep. I would Sweep the Demon Hunter right now. Sweep him. Try to get an in-cap off that. Nice. Sweep on the on the Druid. Okay. Demon Hunter. This Demon Hunter is just getting freaking rooted and slow this entire game. It's so funny. Iron Bark and Meta. So, yeah, probably Essence Break. Yeah, that seems... that. And this was last patch. <laughs> that was this was freaking last patch, man. Um, 
Yeah, Demon Hunters are hard. Demon Hunters, the mage did a pretty good... I would say the mage did a good job of kiting and slowing. And we actually were super ahead on mana as well. Um, it really comes down to just not having like a whole lot of CC for the healer. Especially Argerids and then Demon Hunters being able to reverse it. The twos bracket is just really hard for casters. That's just what it is, you know. Um, I play with a Warlock. I play with the Priest sometimes. It's a hard matchup I, pretty much every time. Um... As far as what you did, I think fisting wise, you did fine. I, I don't, I didn't see a single issue that you had. I think you were able to use your damage really well into the demon hunter. You know, you use your instant velvet miss when you had to. Chi life cocoon. Um, it's just the lack of stuns that your team has. I mean, I, I keep saying it, but that's just what it is. It's, you know, can you do more damage than the demon hunter and the demon hunter? <laughs> demon hunter has or melee in general. Everything, everything has a ton of damage. So, all right, let's see what we got. We're, we're casting this. Oh no, we're fisting this. Okay. Uh, this is going to be scary. Let me see what talents you're running. Okay, I would 100% play Eminence and not Zen Focus T. Just because you're not casting. You know what I mean? So definitely drop Zen Focus T. And I think Restore is good. Disarm is pretty good. I'm trying to think of a different option besides Disarm. Disarm stops healing, which is good. Um, you could run cheat, um, Feyland Stomp Slow. Um to slow, but I guess you're already running with the Frost Mage. I, I would just drop Zen Focus T for Eminence because uh, Frost Ma Frost DKs are very explosive. You know, they have a lot, a lot of damage in a very short amount of time with their chill streaks and their goes. So, and your port kind of lines up with their go every time. So, you shouldn't be a kill target. And if your mage is kiting well, then they shouldn't be a kill target. Um, Root, so that's an I Frost Nova. Grip on you, stun as well. Um, so versus versus DKs, by the way, they yeah, really good Chigi here. Really good. So when they silence you, or if they silence you, you can't actually you can't Chigi and you can't enveloping mist. You can't Phalanx Stomp though. So this is really good Chigi here because if he silences you, you could still get the value from you can get the healing out, but you just don't have the the enveloping mist. Good, really good job here. Fantastic Chigi. This also snow drift. Hex on you. We want something on the on the shaman though. That's IBF as well. Great legs. Oh. Oh, wait, wait, Snowdrift got that IBF. Okay, that's crazy. Um, we want something on the Shaman, though. We need something. Nice poly. Beautiful. That's Trinket. Trinket from the Shaman. Exactly what we need. So, wrap on the AMZ is perfect. Um, I would sweep next Polymorph is what I would do. That way, the Shaman isn't... I would sweep now, actually. We kicked the, we kicked the Shaman. So, I would I would kick... Uh, I would sweep the DK right now. Good job, Phalanx Stomp here. Good job, Rising Sun Kick. Careful, I would port. Okay, Fort Bruce, fine too. A nice poly, this is when you sweep, right here. Right right now, this is when you sweep. You also want to, when you're the Fist Sweeper, by the way, one thing that you need to do versus Shaman is you need to kill their totems. So right here, Grounding Totem, kill it for you, Caster. Um, any Healing Stream Totems, kill it. Any Healing Tide Totems, kill it. That's what, that's what, your, that's what your job is. You want to kill all the totems. You heal off of it. Great sweep here. Great sweep, especially on the Pillar of Frost. Um, AMS from the DK. Still going to just do damage right through it. Great job. I'm going to keep doing damage. Oh, do we lose our Ancient Teachings buff there? No. Oh, we did. Yeah, we, we lost our Ancient Teachings buff for quite a bit. Like five or six seconds now. So I, I wasn't even paying attention to that. But keep that in mind. You did drop it. Uh, good job activating it with Phalanx Stomp, though. Good. Thunder Focus T. Do you use Thunder Focus T there? No. Thunder Focus T Rising Sun Kick does a ton of healing. So um, if we're starting to fall behind, like right around like now, I would just go for Thunder Focus T Rising Sun Kicks. And that way, you know, you're able to top yourself and your teammate. Doing a good job, though. DK has nothing. I'm pretty sure all, the only thing DK has is Trinket. Great poly here. If we can get a Snow Drift stun, which sounds like a freaking meme, but it's kind of funny. You you could probably get a win. Uh, only got one polymorph there, so that's that's okay. I think we're just hitting this DK. DK, you can cleave off all the pets. Or sorry, this is a frosty case, so I think he only has one. No, it does. I don't even think he has one pet. I think you're just just single target damage from the frost that night. So we're just gonna get stunned here. That's fine. Big damage. There we go. And then you see these uh, totems right here. You could you could nice sweep. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. Fantastic sweep right there. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Sweep the DPS. I, I think you need to sweep the DPS and CC the healer. Like, great work. 
Like that was a really good game. Uh, don't obviously don't lose your ancient teachings buff, but outside of that, really good job. Whoever's playing this comp should be banned from the game. Straight up. If you're playing Aug healer and twos, you should just get banned instantly. As soon as you queue it up, you just get brought to like the character screen saying that your account was banned indefinitely. I don't know what you kill here. I think it has to be Disc Priest because I think Augs, like with their hover, they can't get slowed, right? So they need to, um, I don't know. They're really hard to kill. I'm pretty sure. Evan might here. He gets it off PI as well. What you want to do is whenever you see the breath of Eon or whatever go out, you want to just restore it. Here we go. He's going to do it because he roots, out, roots everybody. There's the debuff here for longer CC. So we're just slept forever now. Life Cocoon. I think I was training Life Cocoon. Yeah, so whenever versus any any spec of versus Devastation Evokers and versus Dev Evokers, whenever you get stunned by the breath, I would just instantly revival or restore this damage. Just because, especially when you see this debuff too and the sleepwalk. This is their big burst right here. So this debuff right here is going to do a ton of damage after seven seconds. So if you're able to just revival most of the damage, it's not going to do that much. That's also upheaval too. So upheaval is like... They're stun and they're big damage. That's how they crank so much damage. So good root here from the mage as well. I think this is Chigi. So this is really good. Nice kick there on the eruption. Glacier spike coming in hot. We need something on the. We need a stun. Yep. Sweet boat. Sweet boat. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that priest trinket or human racial is fantastic. Evan might coming out again. Uh, the evoker did wall there too. Nice root. Get that fear. Your mage wills it. It's fine. There's really not much else to use for it. They are trying to kite, but I feel like you... I guess you could just run down this evoker as much as you can. Great kick on that. Do damage here. Good. I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing any issues right now. You're doing a great job of just doing damage and having uptime. That's the main thing about Fist Weaver is try to get as much uptime as you can on your target. Upheaval. We give them precog. Up. That's Evan Might Upheaval. They're kind of going you now. Because they, I don't think they can kill your mage, to be honest. Nice healing elixirs there. And yeah, just do damage. Chigi's perfect. Yep, try to get a black rising kick and to a blackout kick. And then we should get an envelop and miss. Let me see we are rotation here, actually, on this Chigi. Let me see. So we Chigi. We have no stacks. Rising sun kick. I think we tiger palm there. And then you want a blackout kick. That way you get... Yeah, we only have two stacks right now. Three. All right, finally, we finally get one, but Chigi's, we only got one instant enveloping mist during that Chigi. So you need to remember that you need to get the three stacks for the instant enveloping mist, and you can get those stacks with Blackout Kick, and Blackout Kick has like two talents that lets it heal, uh, do damage multiple times. So by the way, you just leg swept there, instantly got the DPS trinket. So it's definitely the move to leg sweep the DPS. So what you want to do is you want to Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Instant Enveloping Mist, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. Instant Enveloping Mist, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Instant Enveloping Mist. And you just do that over and over again. You, the rotation is a little bit different because instead of Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, your Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Enveloping Mist, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Enveloping Mist. You're kind of just in, weaving in the Instant Enveloping Mist um, because you should definitely be able to get more than one Instant Enveloping during GG. We were able to recover, though, so that's really good. That's really, really good. Um, nice nice poly on the priest there. We have no sweep, so there's not much we could do, right, if we don't have the sweep. We'll, we'll get pressure, but we're not going to get cooldowns. The priest really hasn't... I don't think the priest has used um, a pain suppression yet either. Uh, we've They've used rapture and human racial, which is good, but nothing major. Eruption coming out. Eruption really... It doesn't really do too much. It just, it just extends Evan Might, but I don't even know if Evan Might is... Active right now. Is that the is that the buff that's falling right now? I don't yeah, he definitely doesn't have might So this is good if we can get kick kick on the next one. Definitely want to restore this if we can. Uh this is their really big go here. Fear on you is seven seconds long. Dear God. <laughs> My lord. Okay. Nice sweep here. Perfect. This, exact this is notice how we're getting cooldowns now. This is fantastic. We get a sweep on the DPS, poly on the healer. Get a trigger from the healer. Perfect. This is this is exactly what I'm talking about. Being able to... It's, it's just the lack of stuns that your team has is putting you at a disadvantage because you're queuing into these other teams that have, like, multiple stuns on a short cooldown, and your only stun is a one-minute cooldown. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, we're taking some heat here. Let's see. We got enveloping mist there from the Misty Peaks. Yeah, good job running the town. Now, one thing I you can keep in mind, if you're, you know, you don't have to chase this guy. This mind bender right here is from the priest. It's actually a huge misplay to do this versus a fist weaver because the dragon is kiting. You could just hit this mind bender and you would be fine, right? Like you could you would be perfectly fine. Because you'd be healing off of that. Remember, you don't have to just hit players. You could hit um, anything. Whatever does damage. Swap from the priest as well. Oh my god, we're being aggressive. This is Chigi. Instant Velvet Mist. Kicked on the mind games. Beautiful. You really want to use that Instant Velvet Mist though. Definitely want to use that Instant Velvet Mist like now. Like right now. Please. No. No. Oh, so close. We, we were... Wait, wait. Time out. Do we win this game? We had Instant Velvet Mist. But do we win this? Please tell me we win this. That's okay. I think we do. You know what? I like to believe that we won this game. Yeah, this was a good game. This this definitely showed. I know you lost, but this shows like how strong your stun is. Um, at the end here, I think we could have lived towards the end here. I, I think we could have. Um, Cause like we have instant felt we missed. And then also we also have mind better. So again, keep in mind, you can hit anything. What, whatever allows you to do damage, do it. Hit pets. Hit mind benders, hit greater earth Ellie, hit Juen. Like it doesn't matter what you're hitting. We also have dampen harm, dampen harm here as well. So like, just hit whatever you can. We also have port. I don't think we have a port down all game, but definitely try to keep a port down. You know, and then use you. You had an instant bumping mist here too, uh, with a thunder focus. So this would have done. This would have done a good amount of healing, but yeah. Overall, oh dampen harm. Oh, kind of close, but too too close. Mind games is tough too. Um, I like to think that you won though. I think this is a good game though. Good game. All right, and now it looks like we are back to casting versus disc priest Ellie Shaman. This is fine again. Shaman are rough for mages. So, I, what talents are you playing? Oh, also last game you played Zen Focus T. I would you don't yeah don't play Zen Focus T. Play like Zen Spheres or something. That way, or the slow from the, your fade line stop, just because you know you don't you don't cast on your on your you know on a fist weaver. So oh, we're fist weaving. I am blind apparently. Pi on the shaman, good mind games gets polyed. Great job, kill it. Oh, again, I mentioned it last game or last time you queued to a shaman as a fist weaver. Try to kill the totems, and then also keep in mind if this shaman starts casting or starts kiting you, you can hit this Ellie right here. Okay, so keep that in mind. And yeah, just good, good, good. Just doing good. Kill that Sky Fury Totem if you can. Paint stuff on their Shaman. Good. Fear on you is okay. Should break. It does break. Fantastic. Good kick on the mind games. Oh, we're absolutely rocking this team right now. Sweep the Shaman right here. Sweep him. Sweep him. Burrow. Beautiful. Yeah, we can uh, We can win very soon. I could feel it. We can sweep the Shaman. Kick that. Nice. Okay. Hex on the Mage. Nice sweep on the on the... Both of them, good. And we get to the shot. We get the healer trick. It's fantastic. Mind games on you, so be careful. Hit the priest here. Yeah, be hit the totem as well. Yeah. Oh, can you crackle a sky fury totem? I did not know that. Didn't know that. That's crazy. Um, we are gonna lose our ancient teachings buff in three, two, one. So we don't have ancient teachings buff right now. Keep that in mind. We still don't have the buff. We're doing a lot of damage right now. Still don't have the buff. Good. Now we got the buff. Fantastic. Might want to four brew here. Beautiful. And yeah, don't tunnel vision too hard. You could hit this priest. As I, when when you're playing against a priest, you never want to like stack on them for fear. But this priest doesn't have fear for 13 seconds. So don't be afraid to just, you know, if you're getting kited by the shaman, just whack the priest. Uh, nice CS here on the shaman as well. We've stunned in nine seconds. In cap on the priest there is a little bit. It's okay. It's so it's it's not the it's not the worst. That's okay. It breaks instantly though, because I think your mage is just cleaving damage. Um, but good job here. Maybe kicks on kick that hex is beautiful. Nice drop on the dome. Fantastic. Um, mind games on you, so be careful. Good, great work here. Priest is just doing damage. So I don't know. I think great sweep here. Great sweep here. Priest has no trinket as well. Anything from your mage would be great. Hex, nice kick on the hex as well. Oh my god, we're crushing it right now. Mind control on you is fine. Yeah, I, I that's fine. Good. It puts you on fear DR, so you could probably hit the pre. Yeah, this is fine. You want to dispel your mage. Oh, breaks instantly to the shaman damage. Maybe kick on the hex. Hex on you is okay. 
mage should be able to dispel it unless they're not playing it then you know nice life cocoon here. like this uh, life cocoon is perfect you're just trying to life cocoon and recover big damage here though from you good you have roots good schism from the priest so they're gonna do a little bit of damage kick that healing surge beautiful we want a sweep here we have 10 seconds on sweep yeah this team is just standing out in the open versus your frost mage and they're kind of struggling right now uh that's hex on your mage and root on you we don't mind this at all i think it broke actually broke there too um Major teachings buff is great. Your mage wills or gets out of that fear. Shifting power from your mage. So he should be okay because they should have barrier back. I think should have barrier back and, and CS if we need it. Paints up on the shaman. I would just swap to the priest probably just because, you know, you do doing more damage to the priest. But trigger from, oh, the mage, the priest trained at that poly. This sweep here. Sack for the sweep. Oh, you could sweep them both right now. Sweep them. That's okay. That's okay. Nice glacial spike here. I don't think they have grounding for this either. Yeah, I would sweep both. Oh, that's burrow. After this burrow, try to sweep both of them because for some reason they want to stay stacked. Nice. And this is Ray Frost. This is just kill, right? It's kill. Nice in cap. Yeah, just kill. Fantastic job. That was a great last game. I think that was the last game. Yeah, wow. That was a really, really, really good games there. This was definitely an example of what you should what you should be doing. Your mage is doing a great job of getting CC on the healer. Obviously, the one big thing is it's not a melee. You know what I mean? It's another caster. So I could see, you know, it's a little, gonna be a little bit easier versus casters, but that's the general strategy that you wanna do is you wanna always try to get CC on the healer, sweep the, the DPS, and just tunnel the DPS to the ground. As far as critiques go, I think overall you did a really good job. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, there aren't many complaints I have. The first game was fantastic. Great sweep here on the wall and on the pally. I think you kicked what you had to. So that was a really good job of just using your kicks. Uh, the second one, yeah, this one, yeah, they just didn't drink it. <laughs> they, for some reason, the the hunter, the warrior, and the <laughs> they just didn't want to drink it. Good use here. Make sure you play away from your port or reset your port. It doesn't matter what you do. Just make sure you're uh, you're away from your port. That way, when teams like this try to target you, you can port away and avoid their damage. This one was good. The warrior had a lot of uptime on your mage. And we kind of got our stacks of manatee to like 20. So you just want to make sure you use your manatee in like short, short bursts of like four to five stacks at a time. But I think overall it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, it, this is just a tough matchup. Our shaman with versus any caster is just a tough matchup with grounding, sheer, lasso, hexes, slows, static root, static field totem. Like all that is just super annoying. Um, so. Yeah, no, overall, I mean, you did the best you could. Good disarms as well versus versus this team. Uh, but you just, you know, fell short, which is okay. This is another, this is just another horrible matchup. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Um, just a bad matchup. Try and stay away from the Druid uh, as much as you can. I would potentially look at swaps on the Druid. Uh, there was definitely one kill potential, maybe not a kill, but like potential to get cooldowns when we had the poly on the Druid. And then, uh, of course, just make sure you try to sweep the DPS and when the healer is polyed that's pretty much it um this one i think we yeah we fisted this one this one was good do we win this one i forget no did we almost won didn't we fisting versus demon hunter is tough because of blur um but especially our Druid too because of cyclones but overall this was a good game i thought you did really well this game right I don't think there was anything major we did wrong. It's just demon hunters are strong. They do. Oh yeah, your mage got absolutely destroyed at the end here. Yeah, your mage just essence break just <sighs> crushes them. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. It's a really hard matchup. Uh, demon hunters and druids are just like your biggest weakness. You have spam clones from the druid and roots, and then demon hunters just do a ton of AOE damage. Uh, this one was a fantastic match. Great work here. This one, great job fisting. This is when I think you started to realize that you need to sweep the DPS. So you got really good sweeps on the on the DK and the Shaman. I think Shaman Trinket's the first poly, I'm pretty sure. And then we got a double sweep too, right? I think the Shaman Trinket's the first poly. Yeah. And then we got like a double a double sweep after that. And we just won. We got, we, you got cooldowns essentially. What you got is you got cooldowns and then eventually got a kill, which was a great job from you and your mage. Uh, really good work. I think your mage and you are doing fantastic, especially two's bracket's hard. Okay, two's bracket is literally like the wild west when it comes to just queuing. So you you know you, you can't really predict this one. Just an unfortunate loss. Uh, make sure you get a port down. 
even though you're fisting, just make sure you get a port down. I think it's really, really important. Uh, that way you avoid damage. We did have Dampen Harm, but it was slightly too late. And then we also had an instant enveloping mist. Your Chigi rotation needs to get slightly better just because we only got one enveloping mist during a Chigi. Maybe maybe this was the first time it happened. If if it is, my bad, like 100%. Um, but there was one Chigi where we only got one enveloping mist. And that's kind of like the biggest thing about Chigi is, yeah, it's actually like right here, I think. Yeah, we this was after Chigi. So we Chigi right here. Yeah, we Chigi. Fantastic. We Rising Sun Kick. And then I we Leg Sweep, which is fine. Like, that's perfectly fine. And then I think we we only got one Blackout Kick. Or we Tiger Palm. Or we Blackout Click and one... What do we do? We, we get... Yeah, I can tell by the buffs what you do. Let me see. Rising Sun Kick, you Sweep. Yeah, you, you only used one Blackout Kick. And then I think we Tiger Palm. Yeah, and then we Tiger Palm. And then we Blackout Kick. And then we get Instant Palm. Yeah, so that, that rotation just needs to just... Get a, just tighten up a little bit. What you want to do, the sweep is fine. Yeah, the sweep is perfectly fine. But when you have Chi-Gi up, you want to Tiger Palm with the buff, right? With the Feyline Stomp buff. That way your Tiger Palm hits twice. Then you want your Blackout Kick after that. You want you always want a Blackout Kick after your Tiger Palm. This rotation would have been fine if you Tiger Palmed, then Blackout Kicked. But what you did is you Rising Sun Kicked, then you Blackout Kicked. But you don't want to do that because you only get one stack of your Chi-Gi. So keep that in mind. And then we need to use it. Because these stacks don't go any higher than three. So we now have instant enveloping mist and and we're not using it. So and then I think the same thing happens at the end. We have instant enveloping mist here. I think we have instant enveloping mist for a while. Yeah. And we just don't press it. And this could have this probably could have kept us stay alive. So just keep that in mind. You have that instant enveloping mist. Just you're chilling. Um, and then this one again. Yeah, I think it just clicked this time around. It's fantastic work here. You get multiple double sweeps, and you get sweeps on the Ellie Shaman. You get trinkets everywhere, uh, and this was just a really good game. Yeah, I don't. I, there was nothing crazy with your talent build. Obviously, now that it's season three, drop the Misty Peaks and go to Shailun's Gift, and then drop the the stats for the faster Legacy of Wisdom. I think it's called for the faster Shailun's Gift. You could port Shailun's Gift yourself, port back, and then you you can recover if teams are targeting you that is it for me if you have any questions at all hopefully this was helpful for you or anyone who might be running to the same comps and twos or anything and that's it for me hope everyone has a fantastic day hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you later